What is up, YouTube? It's your boy Jason D back again with another unboxing. Today, we're going to be unboxing the Craftsman four horsepower, oh, I'm sorry, three horsepower, four gallon uh, shop vac. This is going to be the vac that we use for uh, the uh, dust collection system for the Cobalt router and router table. And I'll tell you what, guys, uh, just booked another job. We're going to be doing a custom box for a I think it's a 2005-2006 Chevy Tahoe to fit four tens. Um, he's going to put in four American base um, XLFs, I believe. Maybe go with the TNTs, I'm not sure. And I think we're going to do like a, a, a uh, 3,000 watt tar amps um, monoblock amp. So we'll do a little bit of unboxing and reviewing of those as well. Uh, plus, of course, I'm going to give you the video of the um, show you the video of the the build for the box, um, and then we'll we'll show you what it looks like in and how it sounds and everything. So for now, let's get to it. Let me go ahead and get it open. I've already cut the sides here. That way we. Can cut across the top here open it up and see what's inside imagine there's not a whole lot to this uh, looks like the first thing we've got is the hose and everything else looks like it's in one big piece that's fair enough that's easy enough Also, guys, today I'm going to be going to, um, I believe, Harbor Freight. I'm going to pick up a, a an air compressor and uh, something like a brad nailer or something like that, something to tack the box together. Um, plus some extra clamps. I've got a few clamps, but, you know. We'll need more to do a box for a 10. Those are going to be some large baffles, and since we want to, we want to double up on the baffles, uh, we're going to have to glue them together and clamp them down. So it looks like it comes with three sections of hose. Four of these little feet for the bottom of it. It actually does come with a bag for dry vacuuming, And... Uh, Looks like that's it. I thought it came with an attachment. Let's open it up and look on the inside and see what we've got. And it does. We've got some more stuff in here. We've got the instruction manual. Of course, we've got the filter. It goes somewhere on here. Imagine it goes around the outside of this ring. Now, probably goes on the inside for wet vacuum. This would come out. And uh, here we go inside over this canister for wet vacuum. Uh, it does come with a flat attachment there. Ah, wheels comes with four wheels. Comes with a set of screws, flat head, or um, actually they're they're bolt heads as well. We've got an attachment for the hose to uh, hose piece to sit on. So I'm going to get this all put together, guys, and I'll be back once I get it put together and turned on. So I want to show you guys the steps along the way um, as we put it all together. But like I said, it's got these four stabilizer feet that slide on, and then it's got a screw hole in each one. And that's what those four screws are for to tighten down to hold them in place and then the wheels they clip into out here i mean what can i say it's a craftsman um i know it's not the you know the top of the line in the world today but craftsman is a really reputable brand um so you know it, I, i'd say it's going to be a really good sturdy piece of equipment here so I'm going to finish putting it together and I'll be back. Okay, so here we go. We've got the four legs on. 
It's got the roller wheels. They seem to roll really well. Nice and smooth action and operation. Uh, I did take a look at how it kind of works here. And what you want to do is you want to set this upside down. And you can see this um, filter locker that locks the filter in place and holds it there. So, one hand you hold the filter, with the other hand you twist this filter nut lock cover off. You'll slide the filter off and it's it's on there. It's got a good seal. So anytime you use it, you need to take this out, bang it off. If you got an air hose, you can blow it out from the inside and outside and clean that filter off. If the book says you can wash it with water, but if you do, make sure you let it dry uh, really well before you put it back in. Because once you get it clogged with dirt, wet dirt, you'll never get it out. So this is for the wet operation. You'll slide the foam filter on and in place, making sure that it's all the way down inside. I don't know if you can see it or not, but a, there's a nice lip around here for it to sit on that seals it really well. Uh, this is for wet operation. Anytime you uh, do vacuum up any wet, um, I, my recommendation would be to pull this filter off, wash it out really good, because otherwise it's going to mold and mildew. Um, and you know, mold can be harmful. Uh, so, God knows you don't want to get sick because you didn't clean your shop back filter. So you press the filter back on when you go back to switch back to the dry operation, which is what we're going to be doing for the most part here. Um, it's got these slide tabs in here. I hope you can see them, but slide them on and to tighten push it on all the way turn clockwise and now it's locked into place the top sits on just like this it's even got a really nice carrying handle it's got two latches one on either side latches that into place got your hose lock for the front here but I want to install this filter bag because we're using this for dust collection for the router just gonna open this filter bag up this inside of here like this actually it's like we want to kind of pull it around it does have instructions right here on the outside we'll slide the filter in place grasp the cardboard with two hands And slide it on I'll show you right inside of here there's the inlet for your vacuum there for the vacuum hose you're gonna slide this all the way into place it's a really tight seal you have to push really hard but that gets that installed there so now we're actually collecting into this trash bag rather than just into the, the open vacuum itself. From there, we install the hose. As you push it in, kind of give a twisting motion and a, a 
clockwise uh, motion there. And then it comes with this hose hanger as well. So we're gonna wrap the, the hose around, slide that into place. That's not gonna hold it there. Slide that little lock. Well, if we if I can get it, slide that little hose lock into place there. Now we've got that locked and out of the way. We're gonna open the bag up so the filter doesn't push the bag out of the way or smash it down anywhere. Set the filter back on top. Close the latches and then. As far as this fittings attachment goes, looks like it sets right back here. There's three slots for it to slide into place. And you kind of have to take that off and get that, see if we can get that out of the way a minute slides into place on these three different little slots. Hey guys, this was really hard to push down, but once you push it down, you'll hear it click into place. And then we can put this filter cap back on here. So now we've got a place for our extension hose to go. Imagine they expect you to keep one of these on at all times. There is a spot here for that to slide on. So you kind of keep everything in one place. Matter of fact, there's actually two of them, I bet one of them, you can slide the hose back here, kind of push it into place also, keep it all wrapped up into one place, and if you guys will note, it does have the ground plug, so make sure that you don't pull that ground plug off for safety reasons, make sure that what you're plugging into does have the extra ground plug on it. Um, helps to keep from you know catching fire which uh, last time I checked was a real bad thing so let's, um, let's plug it in and see how it sounds it's got a uh, bread tie here holding the wire power wire together um, I've got in, last night I installed a uh, power strip over here on the end of my table you can kind of see it down back there I just use some velcro to stick it down um, I don't know how well that double-sided sticky tape or that sticky on the velcro is gonna work but that way if I need to take it off for any reason all I've got to do is pull it off of there and it should come right off <laughs> Got some, got some really good suction. The only problem I see with this right now is going to be trying to install this hose on the back of this router table because they've got a one inch hose we got a three inch inlet on the back of our router table. So we are gonna have to go and get an adapter for that. I believe that uh, they sell those at Lowe's or uh, Home Depot, either one, um, probably whatever local hardware store you've got, probably have some sort of a ring adapter there. Um, 
rubber with metal ring, uh, tightening rings. Uh, anyway, I'm going to get this set up with the router table and um, we'll see how it goes from there. Remember guys, hit that like button if you learned anything on the video and if it, was, if it did you any good at all. Uh, subscribe. Turn on your notifications to make sure that you know when the next video is coming out. Believe me, we've got a lot coming. The next video I've got in the series is going to be on this perfect circle cutter. Um, this will be used for cutting out the holes in the baffles for the subs. Um, I've got this and I've actually got another one. Uh, I don't know which one's going to work better, so I went ahead and got two different kinds to try them out. Um, this one's got more, more attachments, but the other one that I've got, I think is a little bit better quality. So uh, stay tuned guys, and thanks for watching.